Hi there. Welcome to this edition of Green Insights. Our topic is Lead for Neighborhood Development, the Prerequisites. Thanks for stopping by. Lead for Neighborhood Development is a lot like the other LEED certification programs, but it also is uniquely different. Like its cousins that certify sustainable buildings, the LEED ND rating system has a series of prerequisites and credits. Credits are optional pursuits. They are goals and thresholds that give a project points if they are met, points hopefully accumulating to one of the coveted LEED certification rating levels. Prerequisites are non-optional. They are mandatory benchmarks that must be met if a project is to be considered eligible for LEED certification. Prerequisites do not earn project points. They are the qualifying starting point. LEED ND prerequisites are different from those in the other LEED ND rating systems. Because all other LEED rating systems certify buildings, their prerequisites naturally have to do with building requirements items which can be controlled and constructed by the builder. LEED ND certifies sustainable sites and neighborhoods. Some of its prerequisites have to do with site characteristics, existing features that cannot be controlled by a builder. Therefore, site selection is a very important factor of LEED ND. In this brief presentation, we will quickly overview the LEED ND prerequisites. There are 12 in all. Most of them are rather complicated and come with various and often confusing options. There are also a lot of detailed definitions within the individual prerequisites. During this presentation, time constraints unfortunately do not allow us to explore these options and definitions in sufficient detail to be fully understood. The LEED ND rating system is divided into three major credit categories, each of which has its own prerequisites. The first category is Smart Location and Linkage. There are five prerequisites in this category. Four of these have to do with physical on-site characteristics, sensitive land areas that should be protected from development. Three of them are environmentally sensitive. One, lands that contain imperiled or endangered species and ecological communities. 2. Wetlands and water bodies, and 3. Floodplains. These environmentally sensitive lands are defined and regulated by different government agencies which are described in the LEED ND rating system. The fourth land type to be protected is prime and unique soil within agricultural preservation districts. While perhaps not environmentally sensitive, these soil types have economic, historic, and cultural significance. The safest strategy is to avoid sites that contain any of these sensitive land areas. LEED ND does allow development on sites with these land types, provided they, that they are protected and not disturbed. In some cases, surrounding buffers are also required, as well as permanent conservation easements. However, some disturbance of a portion of these sensitive land areas may be allowed in certain instances if mitigated according to prescribed requirements within the LEED ND rating system. All four of these sensitive land types can be found throughout the country and may be present in urban, suburban, or rural areas without distinction. The fifth prerequisite within the smart location and linkage category is actually the first one listed, prerequisite one. It deals with surrounding land use patterns and is entitled smart location. It is in this prerequisite that LEED ND steers development away from suburban and rural areas and towards existing urban centers. There are four options to achieve, achieve prerequisite one, all of which include detailed definitions and calculations. In very basic terms, the options are one, infill sites, which are sites surrounded by a high percentage of previously developed land, two, adjacent sites, which are sites surrounded by lands with a lesser percentage of previous development, but which have a high degree of street intersections and road connections. Three, sites near public mass transit. And four, sites with nearby neighborhood assets, such as grocery stores, retail, service centers, and institutional uses.
Confused yet? The specific requirements of each option are described in the rating guide. In addition to these four options, Prerequisite 1 also requires that the site area be serviced either with existing public water and sanitary sewer service or with an area approved and adopted for public water and sewer service within a legally binding capital improvements program. With this requirement, LEAD ND further directs development away from outlying suburban and rural areas and thus tries to reduce suburban sprawl. The second major credit category within the LEAD ND rating system is titled Neighborhood Pattern and Design. It has three prerequisites. Like its category name implies, these prerequisites have to do with how the overall site is designed to function as a sustainable neighborhood. Prerequisite 1 is titled Walkable Streets. It has four thresholds, all of which must be met. The thresholds address building entrance locations and connections to the street, building height and its proximity to the street, public sidewalks along streets, and the number of garages and service bay openings along the street. Prerequisite 2 is titled Compact Development, and it regulates the minimum density of the site. Residential density must be a minimum of 7 units per acre. Non-residential density must have a floor area ratio of at least 0 0.5. If projects are near public mass transit, these density requirements are increased. Prerequisite 3 is titled Connected and Open Development. For projects with internal streets, it mandates the minimum density of street intersections within the site and the maximum spacing of streets along its boundary. For projects without internal streets, it mandates street intersection density within a one quarter mile area of the project boundary. These three prerequisites can all be controlled by the developer, unless the project does not have internal streets. In this case, the site must be surrounded by an area with sufficient street intersection density. LEED ND actually encourages streetscape, density, and connectivity levels much greater than required by the prerequisites. Each prerequisite in this category is also repeated as a credit with much higher threshold levels. The final major credit category within LEED ND is Green Infrastructure and Building. Here we have four different prerequisites. The first three prerequisites deal with building requirements. Prerequisite one is called Certified Green Building. A LEED ND project must have at least one green building, certified either by another LEED rating system or by a different green certification program, provided it has an independent third-party review. Prerequisite 2 requires a minimum building energy efficiency for new and renovated buildings within the development, measured against an established baseline. Prerequisite 3 requires a minimum building water efficiency for new and renovated buildings within the development, again measured against an established baseline. The final prerequisite, number 4, is a site requirement. It requires a construction activity pollution prevention plan, also called a sedimentation and erosion control plan in many parts of the country. Implementation of the plan must prevent soil loss, sedimentation within stormwater conveyance systems and streams, and air pollution from dust and particulate matters. Lead ND, 12 prerequisites in three major credit categories. All projects considering certification should first determine if it can meet all these prereq prerequisites before it proceeds further into the program. The GBCI offers to do a one-time determination of the five smart location and linkage prerequisites for LEED ND registered projects. But a good land planner and his or her team of qualified consultants can do the same work probably more quickly, efficiently, and without having to pay the registration fee to the GBCI. That's the route I would recommend. Thank you for watching this presentation. Your comments and feedback are welcomed. If you have any questions or would like information about how Greensight Consulting and Design 
can help you with a LEED ND project, please contact us as shown on the slide. We offer more thorough presentations on the LEED ND program for interested developers, contractors, and design professionals. I am Rob Eggers, an accredited professional in LEED for Neighborhood Development. And again, I thank you for watching. Good day.